This time on the show, persistent SSH reverse shells on a Wi-Fi pineapple, SSHFS in Linux the easy way, public key authentication in Windows without pageant, and a whole lot of techno less. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Idea Paint. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morris. It's your weekly dose of techno less. And what are we doing today? Some Q&As? Yeah, we're taking a lot of the stuff that we've talked about. We're answering a bunch of questions that have come up with it. We're getting into some awesome. more advanced usage scenarios. Mm, yeah. Yes. Some practical fun stuff where it's like... Like a Wi-Fi oh, pineapple, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're doing a little right. bit of that. that Actually, you know, speaking of that, we uh, just launched hours ago today when we were shooting um, the 2.0 firmware of it. Oh, sweet. It, it's using the new Linux kernel, the Linux 3.2 kernel, just mm -hmm. like the new Ubuntu 12.04 uh, is. Oh, okay. And um, it's... I did some benchmarks, 23.7% faster integer math. Holy crap, that's really good. <laughs> yeah, it's a noticeable difference in like, yeah. the PHP and whatnot. And oh, so I'm awesome. really stoked about that, as well as you cool. know the, the Pineapple Marketplace, AKA the App Store, has Sweet. plenty of new good stuff coming to it. And Ooh, I can't so anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk stuff. about this more properly soon. But the reason I bring this up is because uh, it is the perfect example for our kind of gray hat scenario here yeah. of a penetration tester doing some remote um, off-site kind, yeah, of, kind of uh, some off-site uh, yeah, work illustrates perfectly with the SSH connections that we've been talking about okay. How, that you were talking about what yeah, Some, somebody's yeah. SSHing up into your heart I hear oh yeah maybe I don't know anything about that hmm. No, really, how'd that go with Dale Chase last night or not last night last week awesome yeah I'm assuming yeah <laughs> I mean not that we don't know because it's not like it's Thursday now and we're gonna be partying later but I'm yeah, sure like it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course, it was. It's an amazing. exciting day. We I got know. our 11:11 party. We also had some really awesome news from Revision Three. Oh yeah. So Revision Three is to be acquired by Discovery Communications. You guys know them as the people Yay. that do Discovery um, Network. Yeah. The TV Network. Yep. And so that's pretty cool because so you we're know, kind of all like a big happy family now. Hooray! I know. I'm so yeah. so totally stoked. I it, mean, they're they're a great. A group of people. Yeah, and I like the fact that they're not looking to like bring their own. Like, I got a call from management. They're like, "Don't worry about it. They're not bringing their people in and changing things. They're, you know, That's they good. like what Revision Three is doing. Yeah, they're kind of the grandfathers of internet television. And hell, we've we're actually the longest running show on Rev Three now. That's that Dignation right. ended. We are. You yeah. Know? Oh so gosh. it's like, That's crazy. feel great to be part of that. And wow. if you're worried, don't be. I, you're not going to see any changes that are going to. Take the techno lust away. Nope, we're still going to be awesome, so yeah. keep watching. Uh huh. <laughs> so we got a gift from a fan. Did we? Yes. Let's bring it on. Let me step off my little mm -hmm. soapbox. Look, you got some flash drives. You mean floppy drives? Or, yeah, floppy drives. <laughs> what did I say? Flash drives? That's like a Freudian slip because it's like, what? What do you do with these? Yes. I love these guys. Coherent. From Steve, he says, I present to you Coherent a, as gift for the many hours of education and lighthearted entertainment you have provided. I've included some printouts from Wikipedia about the OS and its company's history. The manual's quite good. Still available as Linux Volume 1 AZ, AC Zcat by Dale Sheets. As far as the disks go, you are on your own. I last had this installed in dual booting with DOS 6 with desk view around 1994. Hope you enjoy. Oh, hey, look. Pound include stdio.h and path.h and, you know, uh, main and ends with a void. And, oh, yeah, this Sounds is Sounds very this. similar to some things I have seen. Well, you know what? I have done. You know what would be really interested to see is uh, if those floppies work. We really do need to build an old machine. That would be for awesome. For all of the, the stuff that we've been getting for the, I don't know, museum or whatever. Yes, that would be so cool. Because I've actually heard anecdotal evidence from, like, friends that their floppies still work. Are you serious? Yeah, like oh. five and a quarter is 20 years later, wow. still rocking. And to think these days our hard drives fail in like five years. Don't say that. Don't ever say that. Raid guys and, and Crash well, Plan yeah. or Carbonite or Mosey or not Mosey. Dude, totally. But anyway. Like up in the cloud, man. Yeah. I do. Yeah, that's what I do too. Encrypt and not Or the Google the Drives or R-Sync over SSH. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. We're going to be touching on everything here. Um, so let's get to it, man. All right, cool. What are we doing today? Well, what we're doing is we're using proxies to bridge two 
uh, desperate networks. Two completely unrelated, <laughs> des disparate, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Two dynamic, disparate, desperate, whatever. <laughs> uh, we're going to be bridging a pineapple with a dynamic IP address okay. with a laptop that has a dynamic IP address over the cloud. All right. Let's so, do it. All right. So here we go. Let's start off with our happy little fruit guy here. That's a Adorable. good pineapple. Oh, yeah. And so the cool thing about this Wi-Fi pineapple here is he's, you know, battery powered and he's got a nice little, um, he's got a, what is this, a thumb, or not a... Uh, a tongue sticking out? Yes. No, this is a 3G modem. <laughs> you know? Ah, all right. And so there's a bunch of 3G modems that work out of the box. And right, yeah. um, again, this could be any machine, like but in Huawei our case... one or whatever it's called. Uh, all those. Huawei. Uh, Huawei, uh, yeah. There's a Novatel and a... There's a Novatel and a Sierra from Ting that work, oh, as nice. well as a ZTE on T-Mobile and a couple others. Okay, cool. You know, but uh, so this guy is up in the cloud doing his thing, we're like a pen tester, and we leave it right. at the site where we're going to be doing some penetration testing. But now we need to be able to access this remotely to start owning up the Wi-Fi. Okay. We don't want to be anywhere near the network when this is going down. So we are over here, and here is our awesome little hacker laptop. You can tell because we've got. Our, uh, our Your black little hat black hat, on. yeah. Yep. And we're also on some Wi-Fi at, say, a coffee shop or okay. something, right? So they're two different machines. Yes, and so let's just say this one has an IP address of 8.1.2.3, and this one has an IP address of 4.2.3.4, just I've... for Example sake. I thought that one was like 172.168.42.42 or something uh, like yes, that. Yes, it actually is the also 172.16.42.1. Yeah. This, this is because it has multiple interfaces. Okay. So as we know, it's a Wi-Fi pineapple. So is this one the 3G? Yes. Okay. So it has, you know, it's Wi-Fi. Yes. Which in this case is over here. Okay, got it. Um, and it has its public internet, which is here. And so, and that the, it's the uh, 3G dongle is providing it access to the public internet with this public IP address, and that's why it has two different IPs. Okay. And so th this is cool because it allows you know over here at XYZ Co where we're doing the pen test, <laughs> all the people over here to get owned and to route their traffic through, and then of course, you yeah, know, hilarity ensues. <laughs> um, and then we get paid because that's the fun thing about being a pen tester. It's like being a hacker except with a paycheck. Um, so yes, that is this. And we're really just talking about IP version 4 here. A lot oh, okay. of these things get Not a lot IPv6? more. Not IPv6? What's... So, and in fact, I think I accidentally called it IPv5 a while ago. <laughs> a couple of episodes ago, and I got a lot of emails. It's one of those like, okay, I know, I messed up and said 5. But, yeah. Um, tomato, tomato. Yeah, those are the <laughs> ones where, like, instead of three and a half uh, billion addresses, there's mm -hmm. like a billion, 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 right, billion, billion yeah. addresses, and um, and things. Th th this gets a lot easier, okay. and yet at the same time a little bit more complex. And we'll talk about that. So later. this is just for IPv4. Yes. Okay. And that's what most of us are using right now. Mm -hmm. um, so just to kind of like lay that down, because we are, you know, on our way there, and then we'll yeah. get there with Hack Five. But eventually. Uh, uh, yeah, and so what we're doing here is we're going to be allowing these two guys to speak to each other. So um, obviously, you know, I'm here at the coffee shop, mm -hmm. and I am, of course, behind one of these guys. Oh yeah, and it's like it's totally like flaming oh, stuff. Oh, it's a firewall. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. that's that's my yeah. firewall to the one there. Very nice firewall. Yeah, Love in it. fact, when we left. Um, our Wi-Fi pineapple over at Contoso or Northwind Traders or whatever corporation, um, it's behind a firewall as well. Okay. The problem with this is obviously we want to be able to remotely manage uh, our Wi-Fi pineapple with SSH, that thing that we've been talking mm -hmm. about for weeks. And as we know, SSH... But you SSH, can't get there since there's a wall. Exactly. Okay. So our SSH server runs on port 22 by mm -hmm. default. And if so, we tried to make a connection to port 22, we could actually like, beep, you know, get right through their outgoing, but then we'd get here and say, hey, give me port 22 to my pineapple, and the firewall is going to say, oh, F you. Yeah, that's no good. For you, you know, also. So you want to be able to get your work done. Exactly. But see, what I did here was, I was able to exit yeah. the coffee shop. I mean, the same goes in reverse. I couldn't go up to the barista and say, hey, can you port forward port 22 to my, 
my uh, machine here, and he'd be like, kid, if you don't want a latte, then, yeah. <laughs> you know, anyway. So this means that the pineapple can also go out, but they won't be able to access the laptop that you're on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. So, even, you know, the same thing would happen in reverse. Mm -hmm. So what we, what's interesting, though, is it has no problem getting out. And we're assuming that it has no problem getting out. This gets a little bit more complex. We'll talk about using DNS and other means to tunnel out. At, uh, it, that's outside of the scope of this conversation. Let's just say. So these two guys can they can they these arrows like meet in the middle and say they, hello? They can. Ah. And all we need is a little friend. All we need here is a relay, and so we actually have just that. We a have. Relay? Yeah, we have relay. Relay dot Wi-Fi pineapple. Dot com. Okay. And this is our virtual private server, just as we've been talking about before. Okay. It's chilling in the cloud. Let's give it a nice, pretty cloud. I mean, they're all in the cloud. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can all meet this guy. And what's cool about him is, you know, okay, so we're using this uh, this dynamic, this um, DNS address here, yeah. relay.wifipineapple.com. It really just points you to, let's say it's at um, 6.7.8.9, whatever. So it's got That's a public. That's its IP address. Right. Mm -hmm. So it has a public IP address. Well, okay. you're right. We can both talk to this guy. Okay. And that's what's really cool about this. And this is what's going to allow us to, you know, just as we've done uh, forwarding proxies and reverse proxies uh, with SSH, we're going to be able to do the same thing here, allowing both of these guys to communicate because we can all punch a wall, basically, that nat traversal thing that we were talking about in 1108, uh, oh, we're going to be yeah. able to talk to this guy. Okay. So it's time to start thinking with portals. <gasps> like like orange and blue portals. Yeah, we'll do orange and blue <laughs> over here, right? And so this orange portal here, a.k.a. our SSH tunnel, because we can exit this firewall. Oh, my firewall. God, I just had a realization. You know the chicken portal is named Shell? No way, you're right, totally. she is. Totally. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> that kind of is awesome. <laughs> okay. We're actually going to be using wow, this <laughs> to get a shell on the Wi-Fi Pineapple. We're not using this to do a, like a, to route the Wi-Fi Pineapple traffic through. We're just going to do it to do to management. To access it? Okay. Right. So, you know, the man in the middle is happening here. It won't be happening here. We're just using this oh, as a way okay. to facilitate us to do management. Okay. But Later on, when this, we talk about VPNs, we can talk about this being... Uh, that could be a man um, in the middle, too. If we were to VPN this guy to this, yes. Ah, okay. Then we're getting there. Oh, that's fun So, you could call on the shell, right? So, we've exited our firewall, okay. and we've created an SSH uh, tunnel, uh -huh. uh, and that's our orange portal. And so, we've got a blue portal over here, and that is where the Wi-Fi Pineapple also makes a connection okay. over to our relay. And the, the cool thing about this is we have an SSH server running here on port 22, mm -hmm. right? And we want to be able to get this guy to here. Well, he's also running an SSH server on port 22, okay? Uh, okay. What we can do, however, is we can map another port on this server to actually be a virtual connection to this guy. How does so, that work? Well, what I'm saying is, so we've got this blue portal over here. That is its connection to the pineapple. Mm -hmm. And so uh, let's call that, that's 22, okay. right? Because that's what we want to get to right, is, yeah. is over it's here, this, that 22, right? So we want to get here over 22 through this connection. And what we end up doing is through this portal, we connect to 4255. That's our port number. Why 4255? Five? Does it matter? Uh, no, you could use anything you want. I like 4255 because it spells hack five on a number pad. <laughs> um, but it could be 27015 if you really want to. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. it could be whatever you want. Um, and so this is going to basically map over to here. So when you come in, you're going to say on your, uh, you know, normally we've just been doing, we've been saying um, SSH mm -hmm. user at host. Right, yeah. 
and we normally don't specify anything else. That's all you need, right? Yeah. It automatically grabs your key from you know wherever wherever it is you're storing your key, typically in tilde slash dot ssh. That's where you know that's where your public and private keys live. Oh, yeah. That's where your known hosts live. The known hosts, yeah. Well, turns out you can also specify another parameter, TAC P from port number. And so if oh. we do TAC P four two five five, what we're going to end up with is a tunnel that goes through our firewall, which we can easily exit, mm -hmm. creates that secure tunnel, in this case yep. our orange portal, gets to our server on port 4255, and 4255 says, oh, well, you're obviously looking for oh. this 22 And 22 over automatically here. connects you to. And so since this connection was made this way here, we have bidirectional communication now. We've already, nice. it was established this way, and now it can go back and forth to our 3G modem, and finally end up on our SSH server right here. Cool. So you no longer have to be on the same like LAN or wireless connection as your pineapple to be able to access it and manage it. Yes. That's now so to cool. set this up, and this is the same for like any kind of server that you would have set up over here. Right. We're using a pineapple to illustrate it because we're for crazy and we like fruit here. Yeah. However, um, this would be the same thing with two different machines. In fact, okay. if you were to like go to France mm -hmm. and you were and I went to Guam mm -hmm. and so I'm like chilling in Guam or, or say let's I'm in, I'm in Botswana that's where I'm going or Bolivia Bolivia yeah, yeah that's where I want to go because they get the great Wi-Fi anyway so I'm <laughs> hanging out in Bolivia on my laptop and you're hanging out in France and you're yes. like you're sitting there with your laptop and you're like you know oh no why won't my baguette go in the floppy drive? <laughs> I don't get it. I'm a snubs. And so you call I'm me. A snubs, thanks. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you're all like, Darren, my baguette's not compatible with, uh, with my laptop. Parlez-vous, connect to me and fix it, right? <laughs> and so basically, we could do the same thing here yeah. through a relay okay. so that even if you were, well, hell, even if you were in like China with some crazy ass firewall, um, Maybe not necessarily the SSH protocol as is, but you could, you know, if you can exit and I can exit, we can both meet in the middle somewhere. Ah, okay, awesome, got it. Yes, and so it's the same kind of forwarding stuff that we've done in the past, um, just like we talked about how you can create a local forward and a, re and a remote forward. It's basically that, but this is a very good example of how it could be used, practically speaking. And so I'm going to be showing how to get that set up here in just a bit. Yay! But first, okay. we're going to take a quick break. How's that sound? That sounds awesome. Okay, let's go get a baguette. <laughs> oh, that sounds delicious. Idea Paint transforms virtually anything you can paint into a high performance dry erase service that erases cleanly every time. Just like our very own Hack 5 table right here. Look, it's the cloud. And get this with Idea Paint, you're empowered, just like we are, to collaborate, to interact, and to fully explore your creativity and, in our case, our technical wit. Get that. So, no matter where you use Idea Paint, Big ideas are sure to follow, and it's one of the most flexible, durable, and cost-effective dry erase solutions on the market. So go ahead and head over to ideapaint.com slash hack5 and learn more.